Hi, I'm Tori and we live on a quarter acre urban homestead right in the middle of the city. So we grow our own food, we have backyard chickens just right behind me there, we do our own compost and we really just try to produce the most um, of our own products and food as possible while living simply and slowly. So we've been in our house just about four years now and every year my goal is to produce more food than I did the year before. So, so today I'm going to be kind of planning out my 2022 spring and summer garden. We live in zone three so we have a really short growing season. So I have to be strategic if I want to be able to grow um, as much food as possible here. And ultimately my goal is always to grow as much as I can um, with the least amount of money and the least amount of space possible. So it's currently um, nearing the end of April and our last frost date is at least a month away still. So we still have quite a bit of time to prep um, and think about how we're going to do our summer spring 2020 garden. Okay, so this is the backyard right now. This is definitely like the roughest time of year because the snow ice is still melting. Um, but this is our chicken coop and we actually would really like to extend the run for the chickens. We can't do free range for a number of reasons um, and that was our original plan. So we would love to just at least extend this run and give them a few more square feet to run around. <laughs> we also really need to fix this door. It just would get jammed with the ice all winter and we have really 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 long harsh winters so honestly there's not a whole lot you can do about stuff like that in the middle of the winter it's kind of like you have to just wait for spring this bed i always do like garlic and onions and that actually still needs to be planted usually i would plant my garlic in the fall but i had a baby in the fall so that did not get done my dog wants to bark at the chickens but he's being good and then over here i would actually love to move my compost pile um, over here because it's in the front off the driveway and it's super inconvenient especially in the winter It just it's so hard to get to it ends up completely surrounded by like three feet of snow So I would love to possibly move my compost pile here um, But I'm not sure if that's gonna happen. So we'll see So I have always kept track of my gardening things in the same journal I've talked about my gardening journal in the past and I can't find it anywhere. It's usually in the same place as my seeds and it's not there. So I think it'll still show up. I'm hoping that it'll still show up because it has a lot of like important information in it. But I love having a gardening journal and I just write down pretty much anything related to my garden. So I typically record when our last frost date, our last snowfall is. I'll write down like when I start my seedlings, when I start um, editing things off, and I find a really effective way to get rid of them. I like to write that down because I really will not remember that next year or two or three years from now. But if it's all recorded in a journal, then I can look back on that. So highly recommend having a garden journal and highly recommend not losing it. But this year I don't plan on doing a whole lot of expansion or changing my garden. I would love to, but the reality is just that I don't know if we're gonna be here next summer. And I am 100% an advocate for investing in the space that you have, doing what you can in the space that you're currently in. And I have done that. We've invested a lot of time and a lot of money into our backyard, into our homestead here. Um, but honestly, we're just at the point where it doesn't make sense to invest more. And if I was to expand my garden, it would be pretty substantial. There's no point right now to just add on like another one little garden bed that's not gonna really give me what I want. So it really just doesn't make sense to invest any more into this space. We've done a lot and we really can grow a lot here. So, so I'm really just gonna do what I can with the space that I have right now and that's totally fine. But I would love to have more like fruit perennials, strawberries, raspberries, possibly fruit trees. That is a dream of mine. But again, it doesn't make sense to purchase and invest and care for those if we're not gonna be here to see the fruit of those. It's funny because I feel like people talk about starting a garden as if it's super, super cheap. And yes, it can be done. There are cheaper ways and there are more expensive ways to do it. But the reality is that starting a garden or expanding your garden costs money. And honestly, it often costs a couple hundred dollars, especially when you're talking about larger scale spaces. So. I don't think there's a whole lot of expansion in the works for this year, but we are going to add some vertical trellising. I wanna do a lot of vertical gardening this year just because it's a really great way to grow more in the space that I have. And then honestly, we're probably gonna do a little bit of like yard scaping work. We wanna do like a fire pit. We'll probably expand our chicken coop. So some stuff like that that's not directly related to the garden or the homestead, but still on our property. 
So in terms of changes in my garden, I actually don't think we're going to be adding on garden this year. However, I say that now and who knows how I'll be feeling by June. I might be eager to add on some extra space. <laughs> but I will for sure be amending my soil. So I do a no-till gardening method. I don't strictly follow a specific method, but I don't till my ground. Instead, I love to just add compost, manure, organic matter to my garden every year to replenish any nutrients that were used up the year before. Okay, it's getting so sunny here. In the past, I've gotten manure from um, a local equestrian center and that's been an amazing option. They just let me scoop it out for free by myself. Um, it's a lot of work and you obviously need um, a pickup truck would be ideal. I've done it without a pickup truck, but it's definitely a lot of work. But no-till gardening has been just the best method for me. My soil has just gotten better and better every single year, and I will for sure be continuing no-till gardening um, probably forever because I started with really clay-like soil. There wasn't a lot of nutrients. It was really like dense. Um, like almost like rocks <laughs> so now my soil is so beautiful in my garden beds um, and I really attribute that to the no-till method and just adding tons and tons of organic matter so I'm thinking this year I'm probably set for my big garden beds I just don't think I can justify adding another big bed um, just because we don't really know if we're gonna be here next year so the main like changes to my garden that I'm thinking of doing is right behind me I think I'm gonna do some vertical gardening so I'm gonna get some hog panels um, or chicken wire or something I haven't decided yet and put it up along the fence and then I'm going to grow things like pole beans and maybe even try like some squash growing vertically because those take up so much space and my space is so limited so I'm hoping to maybe be able to try out something like that and then I might actually do like a little lettuce garden closer to my house so that I can just go out cut some lettuce um, maybe do some herbs closer to the house just so that it's easily accessible to cut some for dinner and stuff okay I'll give you a quick little glamorous tour of this <laughs> disastrous spring garden um, so my baby was born in September and that's right around when this should have all been cleaned up and my mom did so much of it which I'm so grateful for but I just never got around to finishing it so this garden's pretty good this one has a ton of garden waste on it which is actually okay I don't mind it because at least the soil wasn't bare and this was all covered in snow until like a week ago like many many feet of snow so this has been protected and buried in snow but I need to deal with all of this. So these are my garden beds. These are huge. I feel like they don't necessarily come off as big on camera. Um, and then I have some other ones in the back that I, last year I just did sunflowers, but this year I'm actually gonna do some more vegetables in those too. But this is what we're working with. So I always draw out my garden layout and typically this would be in my garden journal that I mentioned previously, but I don't have it and this is helpful just to give me an idea of where I want to put things I do some crop rotation so that's just making sure that I'm not planting tomatoes in exactly the same spot every single year and that can help prevent pests it can also ensure that your plants are getting the nutrients that it needs and then I also keep in mind companion planting so all of that I just find it helpful to have a really rough diagram this is not like to scale I'm not planning out the exact number of plants to plant. I know some people do a really, really detailed garden dr layout drawing, I don't. But I do just like to have a rough idea of where things are going and where things were last year in comparison, just to kind of make sure that I'm switching things a little bit. And there are certain things that always get planted in the same spot. My lettuce and stuff like that always gets planted in one spot because it gets the least sun and it's the one thing that does totally fine with less sun and then my garlic pretty much goes in the same spot every year but I just make sure that I'm amending my soil and I'm replenishing those lost nutrients and every summer I find myself wishing that I had done my garden differently at the beginning but the reality is that I am a different gardener than I was four years ago and I know different things now and if I was to start a garden right now I would do it differently but I'm still going to use the space that I have even if it's not exactly how I wish it was So I do not have any sort of fancy seed organization. Um, as you can see, I've stored it in this little container for years and years. Um, it doesn't work great, but it works. I would actually like to possibly organize my seeds better this year because this is just like not great. 
but I thought I would walk through what I plan on planting this year. I pretty much plant the same things every year. I've just really dialed into what we eat and what I really like to grow and what thrives in my climate. So first I have my tomatoes and peppers. So those have actually started right here. I love to start them in red solo cups. I just find that this method works really well for me. So I've started all of my peppers and my tomatoes there a couple weeks ago. Um, but I do a variety of different types of tomatoes. That's just my preference. And then this year I'm doing jalapenos. I've never done jalapenos. I tried like a bell pepper one time. It doesn't do great in my climate, but I'm going to try again this year with jalapenos because I would love to grow my own fresh jalapenos. So I love the brand West Coast Seeds. It's a Canadian company. A lot of their seeds are organic and I've just had really good luck with them. So most of what I have here is West Coast Seeds. The other brand that I like is Renee's Garden. I'm able to get both of these locally so I don't have to order anything. I just really like going into a store and browsing and being able to pick things out myself and also not paying for shipping. Okay, and then I have my root vegetables. So root vegetables do so, so well here. I always have really good luck with most of them. I have beets, carrots, radishes, um, and then I will have onion, garlic, and potatoes as well. And those are some of my favorite things to grow. They're so practical. We eat lots of them. They store really well. So I always do lots of root veggies. And then I have like my leafy greens. So we do not have hot summers. Typically it's around like 25 degrees Celsius, which is around 75 degrees Fahrenheit. That's like pretty normal temperature for us. It's very, very rare for it to even go up to like 30 degrees Celsius, which is closer to like 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very, very hot. We maybe have a week or two of that in the summer. So lettuce and spinach and stuff like that does really well for me and I can typically grow it all summer long. So my very favorite is this West Coast Seeds pomegranate crunch lettuce. I just find that this is so tasty. I really like it. it. It pretty much grows all summer for me. So I do a variety of lettuce and then I do spinach and I love to just be able to freeze the spinach and use it throughout the winter. And then I also have some pole beans. So in the past I've always done bush beans but this year I'm wanting to do more vertical gardening so I'm going to try out some pole beans. Okay and then I have my like hotter warmer weather crops. So I have these blue pumpkins that are really fun. I've grown these a few times and I'm also going to grow these vertical again this year. And then I always do zucchini. Zucchini does super well. I have this um, patty pan squash that I grew last year. This is kind of fun to grow and some different cucumbers that I'm also going to trellis vertically just so that I can get more in less space. Okay, and then last I have, these are pretty much all flowers and perennials. Um, so I just have a wildflower mix. I don't think I've done a wildflower mix in a while. So I'm gonna try that this year in, in a designated space. I find wildflower mix is hard because I never know like what to weed and what to leave. Um, I have some sweet peas, which will also do well vertically. I have some rhubarb. I have a rhubarb plant in my front yard garden that I didn't show you guys from a friend and it didn't do great last year. I'm hoping that this year it will come back bigger because I would love to have more rhubarb. And then I also have chamomile, which has basically become a perennial weed in my garden. It just like spreads everywhere, but it's so beautiful. I actually just really love to have it grow kind of wild <laughs> throughout my garden. I think it's kind of fun. So I probably won't even need to see it this year. We'll see. And then I have nasturtiums and echinacea, which are both edible slash herbal plants that I can use. So that's pretty much what I'm growing this year. It's pretty much the same as I grew last year. And I know that all of these crops will do well here. Um, I am gonna try to grow some of them a little bit differently than I've done in the past, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same. So I hope that was helpful just hearing a little bit about what I plan on doing and just kind of my reasoning and my thoughts behind everything in the garden. I absolutely plan on taking you guys behind the scenes in my garden this summer and showing you monthly or more updates. This is really my favorite time of year. I just find that there's so much hope and excitement in the air just knowing summer is almost here and we have such long winters that it's always so exciting once winter is over. Um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna snow again tonight but we're so close we're so close to like it actually being spring and summer so make sure you hit the subscribe button if you want to follow along on my gardening journey this summer and I can't wait to share more about our urban homesteading journey. Mm -hmm.